The following video is brought to you by the guys at the Wrecking and Racing Podcast, a NASCAR podcast made by the fans for the fans. Check them out at www.wreckingandracing.com, facebook.com slash Wrecking and Racing, and Twitter at Wrecking and Racing. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here, and welcome back to another episode of NASCAR Racing 2003 season in the 2019 mod, and we are here for the first race in the round of 12 at Dover. Brandon is up there on the outside of the front row in that WreckingRacing.com podcast Toyota. Kevin Harvick on the pole after missing the cutoff. We are here just a few rows back on the outside next to Ryan Blaney. Behind us is Ricky Spinhouse Jr., and uh, we got William Byron down there as well. We've got 40 laps here at Dover. We will have one pit stop. We'll be aiming for about the halfway mark. Green flag is out. Really slow start for the leaders here. We're stuck on the outside though, so we will try to keep Blaney down on the bottom, get that drive out of the turn two roller coaster that we have here. There's the bump, out we come, we clear to the bottom. Let's see if we can look three wide under Jimmy Johnson. A little aggressive here on the start while we have new tires, but I decide to roll out of it, give Jimmy that spot as we roll under the double zero of Landon Castle, who had a very good starting spot. Landon showing his qualifying chops today. Everyone else getting pretty much a single file around us. Kevin Harvick outside of Brad Keselowski, who is looking to continue his momentum from the last round, as well as Kyle Busch up here, the other two winners, and Brandon still looking for his first win of the championship series and guaranteeing his spot in the round of eight. And with Talladega and Kansas in the next few races, Talladega's a wild card. It would be nice to have a cushion going into Talladega in case something stupid happens, which tends to happen at Talladega. To the inside of Jimmy Johnson, we'll roll that bottom, see if we can get that launch off the bottom of the turn. And indeed, Jimmy rolls out. We can get out to the wall and get behind Hamlin. And everybody is holding station single file. Harvick looked to fight back on the outside. He's actually looking under Brandon there for the lead. Looks like the AI are pushing their tires a little bit. I don't know if Brandon is running conservative, but he's definitely on the bottom, making them work the high line, trying to work around Brandon Scrapes just a little bit on the bottom, allowing Brad Keselowski to get on his inside. Kyle Busch will follow. Brandon concedes the line, and Brad goes for that lead. Tell you what, Brad is looking very, very tough here in this championship run. He's really putting the finishes together when it matters. But Brandon gets that launch in the turn three and clears them. Jimmy Johnson, however, is not letting our back bumper go. And we get under the 41 of Daniel Suarez. Charging to the inside, seeing if we can get under Kevin Harvick as well. 40 laps will tick by fairly quickly, about 30 seconds per lap. So about 10 minutes of racing and then we will be on pit road. If everything works out, we might be able to catch a timely caution when we're inside our fuel and tire window. Able to pit on uh, pit road and not overshoot the thing. Dover is a, a difficult pit road to get down speed to. Just ask Matt Kenseth who plowed the pit wall one year. We definitely do not want to replicate such things as those getting on the pit road. As far as tires go, I think four tires are the way to go here. Uh, abrasive track surface and I don't want to push my left sides but what I will push is Denny Hamlin going into turn one here will clear Denny he'll roll out of it there we go thank you very much Mr. Hamlin we will settle in fourth place with the previous two winners uh, right here in front of me so strong strong showing by the championship contenders thus far after that point recalculation, Brandon is several races ahead of everybody, so a win is just for those five bonus points going into the round of eight. Uh, it's the last round that we can really gain bonus points because winning in the round of eight will not do anything for the final four as we start heads up, seven up. So, you know, these wins here will catapult us through the round of eight where four drivers will cut and we will whittle down to the championship four. And hard to believe that we are nearing only five races to go this year. Crazy, crazy. And indeed, we're looking to the inside of Kyle Busch here. Really 
choosing when we're going to charge. We want to be right on his back bumper, exiting one of these corners so we can launch down the straightaway. Kyle rolls it in a little bit soft. We'll look to the outside. I don't think we'll have the grip and the drive to charge to that outside line, but we might get a run here. Looking to the inside, yes indeed, we can get under Kyle. A little bit of aggressive braking to make sure that the car stays planted on the bottom line and around Kyle we go. Setting up Brad for the very next corner. Can we get under Keselowski? We can indeed. So put us up to second place. And everybody behind us is really starting to thin out. So the leaders are starting to pace. I don't know exactly where the lap cars are, uh, but the, at this pace, it's a good chance we will reach them, which always throws a bottleneck into the works. Uh, there's been a few races at Dover here between myself and Brandon where lap traffic has ruined the final result, whether it be a late race charge or if we were having a good run and we just get dumped or taken out by a lapped car. We might uh, we, History might repeat itself, let's just put it that way. So we'll take care of our tires as best we can. Leading the most laps certainly doesn't matter at this point. We just wanna stay within striking distance of Brandon just in case uh, we do have to do green flag pit stops. Uh, the closer we are, the better uh, pit stop our team can get us. We might be able to uh, slingshot around him and start uh, pacing this field ourselves. we will see. So far, so good as far as clean track, and it does look indeed like we're reeling Brandon in just a bit. But like I said, it's not on my important to-do list to reel him in and pass him right now, as it doesn't matter until lap 40 what we do. And it looks like he's a little better in turn three entry, uh, gauging where he is in our windshield. Let's see if we can make turn one a little bit better. So yeah, we can run. Well, I mean, he's, he's sort of maintaining the gap there. But speaking of gap, look in our mirror. There is absolutely nobody behind us now. So this pace is a good pace. We'll finish first or second at this rate, which is good going into Talladega. Our bonus points have afforded us a one race cushion where the absolute worst can possibly happen and we'll still be okay. We won't be in a must-win situation going to Kansas. So uh, any extra points we can gain here on our championship contention, the better. We would have something like 40 points or something to catch Brandon. So with our win uh, earlier in the round of 16, uh, we, we did gain five bonus points on him. He hasn't won this championship series yet although he's making a statement to change that and bring the uh, deficit back to zero as far as wins are concerned. But a nice bit of parity so far this championship run uh, with Brad Keselowski winning Vegas. Uh, then I go and win the next race. Then Kyle Busch wins the Roval. You know, we're, uh, we're pretty even Steven. And if Brandon takes the win here, that will be uh, a fourth different winner in as many races, which we didn't really see in the uh, regular season much. So maybe this uh, championship charge will come down to the wire even more so. Little loose off of turn four now. The car's starting to give up just a skosh. That speaks to our need for four tires just sliding through turn one. Looks like Brandon even scraped the wall a little bit. It looks like maybe his handling is going away. Perhaps what that's what the AI are doing is they are planning to really save their tires and possibly take two on the pit stop, which we should be nearing the halfway point and nearing uh, pit stops just washing up like crazy. Yeah, this is not the same race car we had at the start of the race for sure. The tires are really making a difference. So it looks like Brandon is coming down to pit road this time. We will follow him in. See if we can gain some time, and indeed we can. Right down to 2,500 in second gear. We'll be taking four tires and fuel and hoping for no yellow. As the competition stays out, Brett Keselowski will lead that lap with Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin in tow, but we made up quite a bit of time, so we should come out nice and easy. So four tires, guys, let's go.
All right, right sides are on, grabbing the left side tires. No mistakes, and down and away, there we go. Looks like Brandon has got his left side tires on, and we are gonna come out right behind him. He's gonna get a little bit of a launch, though, with a much better pit stall. He can get up to speed much faster than us. Not washing up on this apron. We definitely do not want to get a penalty for merging on the track too quickly. Get up to speed. Looks like we can fit in between the 32 and the 38. Yes, indeed. Now it's time to make these tires work and give these guys some space in turns three and four because I believe now that we have pitted, we need to make the most of these tires. We're going to be hard charging and... Uh, you can see just the, the sheer difference that tires make. We're able to get back on the gas, pinch those guys down to the bottom. And we'll give these guys some room down here uh, as well. Looks like the 30, the 38 will be in front of us here. That was the 36 that we blended with around David Reagan. Only a few races left in his career. Truex will, of course, take the bottom and force us to make a weird arc into turn one, losing us some time. But look at this gaggle in front of us, in front of Kurt Busch in that Monster Energy Camaro. We've got Chase Elliott and Joey Logano, Clint Boyer, and Ryan Newman, and there's Brandon on the high line going around Daniel Hemrick as well. So we're still within striking distance of Brandon. I'll roll out of the throttle a little bit sooner to give Chase the bottom. Uh, just dive bombing Chase into turn one would have not been conducive. Excuse me, Clint, coming around. Clint gives us the top and indeed around Newman and Hemrick, around Wallace and Larson, Almirola and Menard, who uh, missed the cut just barely, though. Menard finished a dismal. Um, he finished in the upper 20s in the last uh, race, but he only missed the cut by like 14 points. So had he had a top five run in the Roval, Paul Menard would actually be in this round. So bad mojo for Paul. But that's four less cars we have to worry about around Austin Dillon getting that beat on Kyle Busch. So we're trying to get our lap back. There is Brad and Kevin there. We're going to get our lap back the ye old fashioned way it looks like. We'll be able to uh, get back on the lead lap just on sheer racing alone rather than waiting for them to pit. And that speed is definitely falling off. Here they come on pit road. I was gonna say, any crew chief worked their salt. As soon as they saw myself and Brandon on pit road, they would have got on pit road immediately from the tire difference. So Brandon gets around Kevin Harvick. He gets his lap back. We will get around Kevin Harvick here on the back stretch and get our lap back as well. So now if the caution were to come out, we would uh, line up on the tail end. So we need these pit stops to cycle through. Everyone is on pit road right there. Looks like their left side or their right sides were in the air, so they just now made it to their pit stall. And yeah, clear sailing, so this should be for the lead unless Harvick and Brad do something crazy like a two tire change. The only downfall will be that once our tires start wearing, the AI are going to have the fresher tires so they can start making up the difference. But these are now passes for position as Jimmy Johnson is down there on the bottom. And there's Stenhouse as well. In fact, I think these guys may even be a lap down. If we are indeed the leader, that will put Ricky Stenhouse, the first car one lap down. Let's see if we can get under him here on the back stretch, or the front stretch, I mean. And I believe Ricky's going to put a bit of a, put up a bit of a fight here. Yeah, we wash out trying to complete the pass on Stenhouse. He charges to the bottom, trying to get around us, but that should keep Ricky behind us. And there is Kevin Harvick blending back up on the racing line. Yeah, waiting so long to pit, we actually unlapped ourselves and now we've passed Kevin Harvick again. So he is now the first car one lap down. And no lucky dog in this particular uh, game as the coding does not lend itself to be. But it's amazing, before pit stops, there was no one a lap down. Now that we are cruising, you can see we are in the midst of lapped cars. Brandon trying to put the 24 of William Byron a lap down there. I don't know if we have enough tires or time to catch Brandon here. 
of fighting with these lap cars was not good for our tire wear and it looks like he's definitely picked up his pace uh, trying to put as many cars a lap down as he can and as you can see Stenhouse is not letting us go he is still pretty much on our bumper and he does have fresher tires than us so that is where our strategy would sort of fall apart is if this ran all the way to the green we would not be on ideal tires we definitely made up a lot of time however so letting Ricky go might not be a bad idea as it's just a lap car and we're, we, we fought to get around all those cars so we used up some of our tires here yeah I am not getting down to the bottom as uh, swiftly as I would like and Stenhouse putting the pressure on he's like a, a fly that just won't leave you alone and speaking of similar things it looks like Ryan Newman is back there as well so if he gets around us he ain't letting us by Speaking of letting by, looks like Brandon's handling may be going away. He let Kevin Harvick go. We washed out bad in the second corner, and Stenhouse puts us into the wall. Down we go, spin it around. Let's grab a gear off the inside wall. That will bring out the caution with just a few laps to go. And figured Stenhouse would do something like that. So I don't think we've lost any positions. Yellow flag is out. But I do believe this race is going to end under yellow. We will get them uh, re-racked up and see what the finishing order is going to be. As expected, we will finish this race under caution. That will give Brandon the win and the lock to the round of eight. He spins his tires just a bit. Congratulations, Brandon. So we've got only 12 cars to look at as far as finishing order goes. Looks like Brandon is celebrating a bit, doing a super slide Denny Hamlin style around and just letting it hang on out. Congratulations, Brandon. Let's take a look at the finishing order here in your top 10. Now this might get a little bit confusing because Brandon was actually trapping some folks uh, a lap down. So Brandon was your winner. We finished in second. Third place actually went all the way back here. Holy crap. Third place, well there was fourth and fifth. Where was third? There we go. So Brad Keselowski in third. Fourth place was Denny Hamlin. Fifth place back to Ryan Blaney. Sixth place right there with William Byron. Seventh place right there with Kevin Harvick. Eighth place, got to come back around to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ninth place, Daniel Suarez. And rounding out your top 10 is Kyle Busch. Let's take a look at your championship 12. So Kurt Busch is still in it. He finishes 25th. Brad is still in it. He finishes third. Dylan is no longer in it. Harvick is no longer in it. We have Al Marola, who is still in it. He finishes 17th. Ouchie, ouchie. We've got Denny Hamlin still in it. He finishes 4th. We've got Ryan Blaney, who finishes 5th. We have Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who finishes 8th. Yeah. We have Kyle, who finishes in 10th. We have uh, Menard is out. Legato is still in at 27th place. Ouch. We've got Brandon, who ended up winning the race. We have myself, who finished in second. We have Kyle Larson, who finished in 12th. And we have, rounding out the top 12, Jimmy Johnson, who finished 11th. So let's look at that crash. Was that my fault? Am I putting all the blame on Ricky Spenhouse Jr.? 
uh, badly. Am I being unfair? So here we go into turn one. We slide up off the off the bottom groove. There we go. Maybe I was a tad bit unfair to old Ricky Spinhouse Jr. We got spun down. Austin Dillon was uh, not included in the chase anymore, but got some damage. Does he keep it off the wall? Well, he got a little bit of nose damage. He was running ninth at the time. That's going to uh, hurt his overall standings, but not in the grand scheme of the chase. So maybe indeed we did come down on Ricky Spinhouse Jr. From the cockpit, it didn't look like it, but in racing, there's two sides to every story. Let's see if TV2 sheds a little bit better light. We did get off the bottom. I will concede I couldn't hold the bottom. But the question is, did we... And perhaps the chase cam will uh, be a better thing. Yeah, I'm definitely coming down below that seam. So maybe I wanted to get behind Stenhouse and cross him over and just wasn't clear. But uh, Stenhouse didn't turn to the left and I didn't break off of him either. So yep, just uh, getting together with Stenhouse. Wrong place, wrong time it seems. So let's take a look at the championship standings after Dover. Denny Hamlin is your cutoff driver there. Brandon advances to the round of eight. We are 57 points clear, so as long as we don't lose more than 12 points to every single chase driver, uh, we'll be a mathematical lock going into the round of eight. We have Almirola tied, Larson only three to the good, Kyle six to the good, Blaney seven to the good, with Stenhouse, Johnson, Kurt Busch, and Joey Logano out. And Talladega, if you get in the wrong line, you can lose 10, 15 spots, and that's 10 to 15 point swing. So chaos may ensue, but that will do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you for the next NASCAR Racing 2003 season video. Take care.